Bye.
Attention Boulevard Prayer Warriors, join Pastor J. Lawrence Turner over the next 10 weeks as we refresh through prayer and fasting. Join us every Wednesday as we fast beginning at 8 a.m., ending at 6 p.m. And join Pastor Turner at 12 noon for a live prayer moment and verbs of inspiration. Spread the word and tune in on Facebook Live or via conference call. Join us as we refresh ourselves in the Lord together. Rooted, staying faithful because our legacy depends on it, is a Boulevard original sermon-based life group study based on Jesus' letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor in Revelations 2 through 3. As we celebrate our centennial as a church, we want to recommit ourselves to what it means to remain faithful to Christ in an ever-changing world and religious landscape. Each Sunday beginning September 19th, Pastor Turner will share a message on one of the seven churches. And in our life groups, we will dive deeper into the biblical truths found in the text as we apply them to our lives. If you want to get connected to a life group, email rooted at theboulevard.org as we work to get you more deeply connected to discipleship at the Boulevard. Tune in on Sundays for our virtual worship experience emanating from our Midtown Sanctuary. The Boulevard is the place to be for soul-stirring worship and a timely word from God. We're on Facebook and YouTube at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. Services will be rebroadcast at 6 p.m. September is National Suicide Prevention Month. All month, mental health advocates, prevention organizations, survivors, allies, and community members unite to promote suicide prevention awareness. Research shows people who are having thoughts of suicide feel relief when someone asks them in a caring way. Findings suggest acknowledging and talking about suicide may reduce rather than increase suicidal tendencies. Some of the warning signs of someone who's contemplating suicide may include talking about wanting to die or wanting to kill oneself, buying a gun or stockpiling pills, feeling empty, hopeless, trapped, or like there's no reason to live, talking about being a burden to others, withdrawing from family or feeling isolated, medical illness, including chronic pain, using more alcohol or drugs, if you or someone you know is experiencing any suicidal thoughts or feelings, get help right away. If there is an emergency, dial 911. There are also resources that can help. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255 is a great tool that can assist. Always remember to stay connected. Staying in touch after a crisis can make a difference. Calling all Boulevard couples, we want to celebrate you. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, let us know by submitting your name, anniversary, and the number of years you're celebrating on our website at theboulevard.org slash anniversaries. We'll honor you during our online worship experience on the fourth Sunday of each month. Calling all kids, kindergarten through fifth grade. Disciple Town is where you want to be. Sunday virtual worship begins at 12 noon. Click the link in e-news to join us as we learn about Christ and the Bible. And get ready to explore. Join Miss Monica for Disciple Town Discovery, a place to try new things. We're learning more about God and ourselves through movement, the arts, and cooking. Look out for more information via e-news and at theboulevard.org. Middle schoolers, there's a new place for you to grow. Join Miss Ty each Sunday at 12 noon on Zoom for Evolve, a place to learn and grow. Check eNews for the link and email Miss Ty for more information. High schoolers, the Nexus Pod, Place of Discipleship, is on IG Live every Sunday at noon. If you're a middle, high school, or college age student, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Nexus Boulevard Youth so you don't miss a thing. If your age is 18 to 25, CRAM ministry is for you. CRAM, Change Requires Alternative Measures, is the Boulevard's college-age ministry that seeks to assist post-secondary students in making a healthy transition into young adulthood. Don't miss our Zoom sessions every Friday night at 6 p.m. 
Email Minister Chris Watson for more information at watson.christopher at the boulevard.org. The Boulevard continues to be a blessing to others, whether it's feeding the hungry, showing love to essential workers, or any of a number of community efforts. We couldn't do it without your generosity. Your giving makes the difference. There are multiple ways to give. Text Boulevard Midtown to 77977. Cash app, money sign, Mississippi Boulevard, PayPal, or by mail. Remember to use hashtag Boulevard Connect to share your watch party, virtual life group, or social media post about how much you enjoyed our most recent service. To make sure you never miss what's happening at the Boulevard, follow us on social media and sign up for our weekly e-news by emailing info at the boulevard.org. As members of the Christian Church, we confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and proclaim Him Lord and Savior of the world. In Christ's name and by His grace, we accept our mission of witness and service to all people. We rejoice in God, maker of heaven and earth, and in the covenant of love, which binds us to God and one another. Through baptism into Christ, we enter into newness of life and are made one with the whole people of God. In communion with the Holy Spirit, we are joined together in discipleship and in obedience to Christ. At the table of the Lord, we celebrate with thanksgiving, the saving acts and presence of Christ. Within the universal church, we receive the gift of ministry and the light of scripture. In the bonds of Christian faith, we yield ourselves to God that we may serve the one whose kingdom has no end. Blessings, glory, and honor be to God forever. Amen. Greetings, and welcome to the Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. We are glad you've taken the time to worship with us. Here at the Boulevard, we are a church leading, learning, living, and loving without limits. And we pray that as you worship with us today, you will feel the presence of God right where you are. Now, if you're worshiping with us via Facebook Live, take a moment right now to share this stream. And if you're watching via YouTube, click the bell to subscribe. Boulevard family, as we come to the close of another month, we like to take the time to celebrate life and love. First, for those of you who have celebrated a birthday during the month of September, please drop your name in the comment section so that we may celebrate life with you. Our prayers that the love, grace, and peace of God be with you forever. We also want to celebrate love as we recognize those of you who are celebrating another year of marital bliss. Now, we'd like to take a moment to recognize and celebrate those of you who have shared your anniversaries with us. Let's start with Angela and Tony Richard, four years. Mark and Shahara Yancey, that's us. Eight years. Uh, Travis and Katina Phillips, 11 years. Metric and Jackie Hauser, 24 years. Anthony and Eva Williams, 26 years. Roy and Vicki Baker, 39 years. Dan and Kathy Henderson, 42 years. And Alvin and Blundell Dandridge, 48 years. On behalf of the One Love Married Ministry, we would like to congratulate you all on your anniversaries. Keep making it last forever. And before we get started with service, we're going to do a quick prayer. Father God, we thank you again for another day to come and worship you. We thank you for ushering us into a new season as fall is upon us. And Lord, we ask that you would allow us to reflect on the dangers seen and unseen that you have protected us from to get us to this point in what have been really troubling times. We thank you for Mississippi Boulevard Church. We thank you for godly unions. And we thank you for the one love that comes from Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Our God is great and he is greatly to be praised. Come on, let's do it together, Boulevard. Give our great God a great praise. He's worthy, yes he is. Hallelujah. You are God and you're in control. Lead it high, you 
praise. You are the great God above all gods. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you. You're sovereign. You're perfect in all your ways. And that's why we worship you. That's why we magnify you. Hallelujah. There's no failure in you. Hallelujah. It's communion time. Yes, we come remembering our precious Redeemer, what he did for us on the cross. Each Lord's Day, we the disciples of Christ, we come to this table of Holy Communion, remembering what Jesus did for us. He told us as often as we do this, to do it in, in remembrance of him. And that's what we come to do. The communion of Holy, the Holy Spirit, we the disciples of Christ, are joined together in obedience at this table of the Lord, giving him thanks. Thanks, thanks for what you did for us, O oh Lord. We praise you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We love you with the love you first gave to us. Thank you. As we pray, Go to God in prayer. Over the elements, the wafer, the symbolic wine, the blood. Oh, precious Savior, our Redeemer, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You was stretching wide. You hung. You bled. You died. Yes. Our Redeemer. These precious moments, oh Heavenly Father, we also want to pray for those who are going through COVID, those who are caring for those who are going through COVID, and those who have lost loved ones who are going through COVID. There's no peace like your peace, Jesus which surpasses all understanding and keeps our hearts and our minds continuously stayed on thee. We bless you now, Lord, thanking you for the new mercies you've already let us see. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. It was some 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem in an upper room. Jesus and his disciples were having Passover. Jesus took bread. He blessed it. And he broke it. And he shared it with his brothers. He said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us all eat together. In a like manner, he took the cup. He blessed it. 
And you say, this cup represents my blood, which I am pouring out for you. Let us all drink together. Yes, we come rejoicing. Rejoicing we have a Redeemer. His name is Jesus. Thank you for coming down. Showing us how to love the greatest man to ever walk this earth. Our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. They hung him high on a rugged cross. Praise and glory be to you, O oh, oh precious God. We thank you. We thank you. Amen. We thank God again for another expression of his love, his goodness, and mercy for affording us this opportunity to connect through the aid of technology for the purpose of worshiping our God. You know, Jesus says to us in John 4 that the hour is coming where we must worship in spirit and in truth. And I pray wherever you've logged on from today that that kind of worship is taking place. And it's come time for us to worship God through our giving. But just before I call us to worship through our giving, I want to share with you uh, a couple of opportunities we want to make sure you are aware of and I hope that you would share it throughout the community. First of all, we look forward to uh, our second cohort of the Black Clergy Collaborative of Memphis, D Free Academy. Uh, we've been able to reach uh, across this city and help people uh, to know principles and strategies to help get out of debt. And if you happen to be someone who's found yourself in some sense of debt, or uh, you know someone who's in debt and wants to get out, uh, we want you to sign up. I believe our next cohort kicks off mid-October, and we want you to be a part of it. If you want to sign up for that, uh, you can go to either the website of the Black Clergy Collaborative of Memphis. We do have a website. We are legit. Uh, so we want you to check uh, out that website. Or you can email Betty Boone on our staff at boone.betty at theboulevard.org, and she'll get you information on how you can register. It's absolutely free and 100% virtual. And then there's a second opportunity that's coming up November the 6th. November the 6th, uh, we know that this year, this pandemic has hurt lots of small businesses and we want to help them stabilize themselves and get back on their feet and help our community to know about what they have to offer. And so November 6th, just want you to save the date for the Boulevard Business Expo. Boulevard Business Expo. And you know, our church has always been engaged uh, at the forefront of business and industry founders of this church. Two of them, particularly father and son, uh, J.E. Walker and A. Maceo Walker, were businessmen. Uh, and we want to keep
keep that legacy alive with sparking uh, business, particularly in the African-American community. And so more information is coming. This is going to be an outdoor opportunity where people can just pass through uh, and learn about these businesses. And so there'll be more information uh, sure to come. And if you want to get connected with that, we'll let you know in the coming weeks how you can get connected and, and present your services in that particular uh, effort. And so we want to worship God through our giving today. God has brought us all the way through. We're at the end of the third quarter. We've got the fourth quarter ahead. And church, let's finish strong. Let's continue in trusting in God. God hasn't failed us yet. God has continued to meet our needs. And we want to honor God and the word of God. You know, the word of God says to us in a number of places, whether Proverbs chapter 3, 9 and 10, whether in Malachi uh, 3 and verse 10, whether Luke 6 and 38 and many other places, God calls us to worship him through giving. And then he gives us the reassurance that as we give, we don't have a need to worry. It's going to come back to us in a God-sized way. Luke, Jesus says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And so, brothers and sisters, I would that we're prepared to give of our tithes. We've been talking for the past few weeks about next level giving. If you're not giving anything, start giving something today. You're giving something that is a little bit random. Commit to giving a percentage, 2%, 3%, 5% of your income. If you've been given a percentage, come on, take the step of faith and give the 10% that is the tithe. And if you're a tither, I want you to pray uh, about being a grace giver, knowing that God has been so good to you, you're going to go beyond uh, the tithe in your giving. And so we, we're going to pray. And as we pray, uh, I hope you prepare your hearts to worship God in a way that honors God and the word of God. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for your provision. And it's out of your provision that we worship you now through our giving. I pray that as we give today, that our tithes and our offerings would honor you and your word. And that as we give collectively, you might use the resources of this church to manifest and realize your kingdom here on earth as it already is in heaven. God, I pray your blessing over those who are unemployed, that the doors of employment will open for them. I pray for those who are employed but seeking promotion would see your hand of favor and be able to testify the promotion doesn't come from the east, the west, the north, or the south. The promotion comes from you. And so we thank you for not just your supernatural provision, we thank you for your supernatural protection. It's in Jesus' name we pray and the people of God said, amen. Come on, let's give electronically in these moments. You can give in a number of ways electronically to push pay PayPal and through cash app. You can literally just open up the camera app on your phone. And if you do that, uh, scan the QR code that you see on the screen and it's gonna take you right to push pay and it's going to help you in this moment of worship through giving and then those of you who want to mail in your tithes and offerings you can do just that send them to Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church Disciples of Christ located at 70 North Bellevue Boulevard Memphis Tennessee 38104 come on let's worship God in our giving and let's allow our worship team to lead us further into the presence of God
100 years of ministry creates legacy. From that legacy comes recommitment to remain faithful to Jesus in an ever-changing world and religious landscape. The choices we take and the paths we choose are all ingrained in our very relationship with Christ and our foundation on his word. Staying faithful. Why? Because legacy depends on it. Join Pastor J. Lawrence Turner as he unearths his study on Jesus' letters to the seven churches from the book of Revelation. Rooted at the Boulevard. Come on, praise God just one more time and thank God that we can go to God in prayer. Don't need a middleman, don't need a mediator. Matter of fact, Jesus Christ is our mediator and we can go straight to the throne of grace. And so, would you bow your heads with me as we ask God's blessing on our time in the word? Let's pray. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the living word. And thank you for the opportunity to study the scriptures on this day. And we pray now that you would breathe upon us all afresh, that the spirit would lead us into truth. And I ask now, Lord God, that you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts to be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. You are our redeemer. And we're asking these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the people of God said, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we come back to Revelation chapter 2 on today as we continue our series entitled Rooted, and I hope it's already blessing you. I want to read in your hearing verses 8 through 11 as we offer this second installment of the series. And this is what we find beginning in verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write the words of the first and the last who died and came to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days, you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death. And I will give you the crown of life. He who has ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. I want to put a tag on this text. And for the next few moments, with God's help and your prayers, I want to talk about a word of comfort for a church in crisis. It doesn't take much probing of the circumstances of our lives to realize the obvious that we seem to be in a perpetual state of crisis. The pandemic continues after claiming over 600,000 lives in the U.S. Ecological devastation rages around the globe from volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, wildfires, hurricanes, and flash flooding. Partisan rancor has enveloped our politics as there is fierce debate and posturing, not only between Republicans and Democrats, but also within the very parties themselves. As a consequence, a substantive police reform bill failed to pass. Raising the minimum wage has not made it to the floor, and the government is facing imminent shutdown because a resolution cannot be reached on a spending package. America's unapologetic original sin continues to fuel a persisting racial crisis that cannot be sufficiently reckoned with unless we seriously make provisions for reparations, affirm without debate that black lives matter and work unceasingly for equity. We saw this week a picture of racial inequality that was called a border crisis, but yet another manifestation of the racial crisis plaguing the world we live in. In a matter of weeks, we saw Afghanistan descend into chaos and the United States airlifted 130,000 Afghans out and will admit into this country 50,000. While our black brothers and sisters from Haiti attempted to cross the Rio Grande into our country fleeing economic and political turmoil in Haiti, they were greeted 
with horseback riding border patrol agents wielding bullwhips. Our cities are in crisis, communities are in crisis, and yes, the church is in crisis. While we embrace the reality of what will be the post-pandemic church, the church across this country has bowed at the altar of political acceptance. Sadly, in these mo most critical times, I have heard preachers perpetuating the big lie of Donald Trump having the election stolen from him and egregiously peddling the idea that the pandemic is fake and the vaccine is the mark of the beast. It's sad that the church sounds more like Trump who has perpetuated wickedness, caused tragedy and cost us lives than we sound like Jesus who is the way, the truth and the life. As crisis persists in the 21st century, it is something that was real in the first century. Here between verses 8 and 11 of Revelation chapter 2, we find Jesus speaking to a church some 40 miles due north of the Ephesian church that is in a city called Smyrna. This is one of two churches out of the total of seven that Jesus speaks to that Jesus has no criticism of. But he takes time to speak to them for two reasons. First, Jesus speaks to this church to give them a word of comfort and encouragement while they go through the crisis. Though the duration of this message, throughout the duration of this message, I will share in greater detail the nature of the crisis they are facing, facing but suffice it to say, they were going through tough times. While they go through these tough times, Jesus wants to give them encouragement so that they don't give up. But further, Jesus speaks to this church because in the fullness of time, he knew that you and I would be here today as followers of Jesus and that we would need a word as we faced the troubles of this world. And Jesus wants to encourage us that no matter how difficult life becomes, how great the burden may be, as you seek to follow Jesus, don't give up on Jesus because Jesus hasn't given up on you. As a matter of fact, he still intends to see you at the finish line and tell you, well done. And so this text is tailored to teach you and I this big idea that the believer's view of God, the gospel and future glory grants us the confidence to be faithfully committed in the midst of crisis. First, I want you to note, I want you to note, if you're writing, what gives us comfort in the midst of a crisis is our number one vision of Christ. Our vision of Christ. Look at what it says in verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write the words of the first and the last who died and came to life. Even though we have a tendency to read summarily over how Jesus introduces himself to these churches, I believe that it unlocks powerful truths that are relevant for these Christians facing their present crisis. When we read the way Jesus introduces himself to the Christians in Smyrna, you will note that it is the same language that he uses when John encounters him in verses 17 and 18 of chapter 1. So for the second time in this book, Jesus says that he is the first and the last. And if you study the usage of the expression, the first and the last, it goes back to Isaiah 44 and verse 6 and Isaiah 48 and verse 12 where it's meant to express that he is the only God who exists. As, as one writer puts it, he's the absolute Lord of history and the creator. This is to affirm that Jesus is co-eternal, co-equal, co-existent, and co-creator with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit in the blessed trinity. What Jesus is saying to these Christians when he reminds them that he's the first and the last is what I've told you before, that if he is the creator, he is greater than anything he has created. Nothing catches him by surprise. Nothing 
nothing and no one can overpower him, which should comfort them in the midst of their crisis to know that as difficult as it may become, God is in complete control. Why don't you put it in the comment section or the chat that God is in control. God is in control over every situation that you come up against. God is in control of what's happening on the workplace. God is in control of what's happening in your family. There is nothing that is beyond God's power and God's providence. But Jesus, just as he did in chapter one, says that he is the one, watch this, who died and came to life. The defining belief of Christian faith is that the incarnate son, Jesus Christ, entered into history in human form, fully God and fully man. That after 33 years of bodily earthly existence, Jesus actually, as the old saint says, he did die. <laughs> This is not fiction, not a fairy tale, not a restatement of some mythology told in centuries past. And to make this abundantly clear, the expression who died literally means became a corpse. We believe that Jesus' heart stopped beating, his lungs stopped breathing. Blood flowed out of him one Friday 2,000 years ago when he died on Golgotha's hill on that cross. But the story does not end with he died, but Jesus himself says, and he came to life. This means that after being actually dead early on the first day of the week through the miraculous defibrillators of providence, Jesus' eyes opened up, brain started back functioning, blood started flowing, heart started beating, and he got up from the grave. And what Jesus is saying to them is that I actually did die, and although death is definite and final and something people do not come back from yet after experiencing the reality of death, I made the impossible possible. And since I overcame that which could not be overcome, you should not fear what you're going through because I'm in control and greater than anything you're going to face. And this is what we need to hear, church, in the 21st century with all that uh, this world presents us with the crisis situations we encounter that the same Jesus who proclaimed to the church in the first century that he is the first and the last, the one who died and who came to life is still speaking to us the very same things. That which you are intimidated by should not be intimidating because Jesus is first and last, the creator and Lord of all creation. While you're worried, he's already won the victory for you. While you're playing the victim, he's already given you the victory. While you're feeling threatened, he's already triumphed over your enemy. And just in case you've forgotten and need reassurance, no situation is beyond his power. He died, and after being dead, he came back to life. And therefore, we ought to know it doesn't matter how bad it is right now, how far you are down, how great the odds that are against you. You serve the God who made makes the impossible possible. Can I ask y'all a question on this Lord's day? Have you any rivers <laughs> that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountains that you can't tunnel your way through? Well, God specializes in things that seem impossible and he can do what no other power can do. Can I ask you one more question? Won't he do it? And this is the point, brothers and sisters. You have to keep a vision of Jesus before us and it's going to help you keep the faith when times get tough. Come on, type in that con comment section, encourage somebody and say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? Won't he see you through? Won't he open doors? Our God in the person of Jesus Christ is more than able. But y'all, in a crisis, Jesus gives us a second thing that gives us comfort and strength. And it strengthens our faith in times of crisis. And it is this, we have to have the proper view of our crisis. When you read verse 9 and the first portion of verse 10, you get the sense Jesus wants these believers to know that the crisis they are well acquainted with, he is also aware of. And there are three things in Jesus' words that describe the crisis these believers are living through. Are y'all with me first of all? Jesus is aware of their, as the text says, tribulation. This is the Greek word, the lipsis, which means pressure. They're a church 
that's under pressure of persecution. And part of the reason they're under persecution is because Smyrna is the center of imperial worship. The Roman Senate actually committed a temp who actually commissioned a temple to be erected there in honor of Caesar Tiberius. These believers in Jesus refused to worship Caesar because they believed the first and simple creed of the Christian faith. Jesus is Lord. Because they would not worship Caesar, which was compulsory with the penalty of death, these Christians find themselves under fire and under pressure. But not only does Jesus know of the pressure or the tribulation they're under, but he also is aware of their poverty. To understand the degree of their poverty is to understand that this word in the original language, poverty means beggars who live not by their own labor, but the alms or generosity of others. This is awfully ironic that they are impoverished because Smyrna was a wealthy city. But what we'll understand, part of the penalty and persecution for not worshiping Caesar is that economic sanctions were imposed against this community. Christian merchants would not receive business. And what we discover further in Revelation is that Christians were not permitted to even purchase goods. The only way they could make it is from the mercy and generosity of some people of goodwill. And then further, Jesus knows that this is a community that has been slandered. Jesus says the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. We need to place these words in context, church, and I want you to hear me. Because these words have been taken out of context to fuel anti-Semitism. Jesus is not condemning all Jews, nor can we, because Jesus was a practicing Jew. You can fight with me if you want to, but the text says, the Bible says, when he was born and of the right age, his parents brought him to the temple to be blessed at the temple. And when he announced his ministry, he went to the synagogue, which was his custom. And when he instituted the Last Supper, he was observing the Passover. Even as he gave, uh, brought into existence a new covenant, he does not advocate for the hatred of the Jews. In proper context, this is not a sweeping indictment of all Jews. Jesus is speaking of certain Jews in Smyrna who were allowed to practice Judaism by the Roman government because the Romans viewed Judaism as both an ancient religious tradition and ethnic identification. When these Jews saw the church in their city beginning to grow, they told the Romans that the Christians who were perceived by the Romans just as a sect of the Jewish faith, they went to them and told them they were not in fact Jewish. And as a consequence, once they were made distinct from the Jews, this church found itself in a world of trouble and tribulation. The challenge that we're confronted with was not just being placed under the scrutiny of the Roman government, but the word Jesus uses is the word slander. Slander is to defame. It's to tell a malicious falsehood. Here's what some of that slander looked like. They would say that Christians were cannibals because they spoke of eating the flesh and drinking the blood of Jesus. They were accused of sexual perversion because although they called each other brothers and sisters, they were greeting each other with a holy kiss. They were accused of breaking up homes because there were marriages where one spouse believed in Jesus and the other did not. They were even called atheists because they would not participate in pagan worship, lie after lie after lie, which is why Jesus says that those who slandered these Christians are of the synagogue of Satan because the Bible says that Satan is the father of all lies. He's behind every attack that comes against God's people. But in the midst of a crisis that is going to land these believers in prison, know that the crisis is for a purpose. Not only is it for a purpose, it's not permanent. In verse 10, Jesus says, do not fear what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. That you may be tested. And for 10 days, you will have tribulation. 
Jesus allows them to go to prison because it was there they would be tested to see whether they were real, whether they were authentic and sincere. And even if they are in prison, he reassures them it's not going to last always because Jesus says it will be for 10 days. This doesn't mean literally 10 days, but Jesus says this is to let them know that their trouble, that the test that they're going through was going to be a, for a short period of time. And those of us who follow Jesus have to know that we will be under attack by Satan. Satan never deviates from his mission statement. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. Satan will attack with pressure. He'll attack with poverty and slander and confinement. And if you allow yourself to be sucked into a vacuum of suffering that you internalize, it will cause you to want to give up. But you realize that what Jesus says is true. In the face of an impoverished situation, you're actually rich. You discover the treasure within when you're being tested because it's in the test that you prove your faith to and your faith in God. And if we're honest, when things are going well, that's not always the best measure of what we truly believe. God wants to know what you're made of and what you believe when the bottom is falling out. And when the rug is snatched from beneath your feet, he wants to know what you believe when your world is turned upside down and inside out in those moments when you want to ask God to make the world slow down so you can get off. Yet in the, these moments, your faith is refined. It's proven to be pure gold. Your heart is revealed and ultimately God is glorified. Crisis is not intended to make you suffer. It's a platform for you to let your belief shine. Interestingly enough, it's a gentleman by the name of Polycarp, who was Bishop of Smyrna in the second generation of the church, who found himself in such a circumstance years after the revelation was written. He was a Christian from early age. He was actually discipled by the Apostle John. He was appointed Bishop of Smyrna by the original apostles. And Polycarp defended the faith. He led non-believers to Christ and found himself at odds with the Romans who began to hunt him down. So at the ripe old age of 86, they finally found Polycarp. They arrested him and sentenced him to death because he would not recant on his faith in Jesus. And when he was given one last chance, as he was to die by fire, Polycarp said these words, 86 years have I served Christ, and he has never done me wrong? How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? <laughs> Y'all, when you can place crisis in the proper perspective, you will understand that, that it is not an end in and of itself. Rather, it's an opportunity to exalt the Savior and to exalt Jesus Christ, my brothers and my sisters. Is there anybody here today that can say, I'm not going to give up on what I believe. I'm not going to throw in the towel on Jesus because I know too much about him for me to doubt him now I wish I had somebody in the room with me right now but when you put some hearts up on Facebook if you know that you know too much about God to doubt him now he's never failed you yet but y'all there's a third and final thing I'm gonna get happy by myself that the comfort we have as believers when we face crisis is the hope of a victorious crown the sobering reality of what Jesus says to these believers and I want you to get this, church, is that their suffering is inevitable. They cannot avoid or escape it. And Jesus is not going to deliver them from it. Which, as a side note, there are some situations you cannot go over, you can't go under, you can't go around them. The only way is to go through them. Even while you go through, there's the hope we have at the end of verse 10 on over to verse 11. Jesus says, be faithful unto death, and I'll give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. Being faithful here means to remain loyal. 
It means to endure. It means to maintain your integrity. It means to keep connecting with God in prayer, even when you don't feel like it. And in three words, Jesus is saying to them, don't give up. This kind of loyalty to Christ and the gospel is more than once in a lifetime. It ought to be for a lifetime. And whether it means facing the possibility of death or living until in old age we breathe our last breath, Jesus calls believers to remain faithfully committed and loyal to what we believe. And if they can hold on to the good news, the good news for them is that they receive the crown of eternal life with Christ in eternity. Church, when you read throughout the New Testament, you know that the crown is what we can look forward to. It's the reward for faithful elders in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4 when it says, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. This is the promise to believers who endure in the faith found in James chapter 1 verse 12 where it says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And ultimately, Jesus is teaching the body of Christ that we can navigate through the present suffering because we have the assurance of the future reward. Faithfulness to God, the gospel, and the church may become difficult in a shifting and changing culture, but with the hope of eternal life, we can look forward and say to ourselves, in the midst of the struggle, it's going to be worth it all. I need to encourage each of you to know that as we face the troubles of this world, resolute to hold on to our faith, you should know that you can make it when you keep an eye on eternity. Yes, trouble doesn't last always. No, it's not going to always be like this but we have the assurance that better is ahead if we don't give up will you encourage somebody in your house and tell them better is on the way tell them don't give up tell them don't throw in the towel tell them better is ahead come on type it in the chat and in the comment section better is on the way and do I have a witness here today that can sing with me that song that says I don't feel no ways tired I've come too far from where I've started out nobody told me that the road would be easy I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me do I have a witness here today that know that better's on the way that can sing another song that says I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder rolling I felt sim breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul but I heard the voice of my savior bidding me to fight on and he promised never to leave me never to leave me alone and if you gonna keep pressing on if you gonna keep on believing if you gonna keep on trusting why don't you give God praise in your house come on throw up those hands and tell the Lord thank you for keeping me tell him thank you for dying for me thank you for getting up for me and then thank you that soon and very soon after a while and by and by Jesus is going to crack the sky at the sound of the trump of God at the cry of command the dead in Christ are going to get up and those who are alive and remain are going to be caught up in the air to meet him are you gonna be them I said are you gonna be there if you're gonna be there come on open up your mouth and shout yes shout yes all hell the power of Jesus name let our angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him king of kings crown him lord of lords if you're looking for that day shout yes shout yes praise him in the morning praise him when the sun goes down but 
one of these old days when I see Jesus, I'm going to tell him, thank you, thank you, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down, friends don't treat me like they used to, since I laid my burdens down, and I'm going home to live with Jesus, since I laid my burdens down, every road goes higher and higher, since I laid my burdens down, shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. Keep pushing, keep moving forward. Keep your head lifted up to Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher of our faith. And he didn't bring us this far to leave us and forsake us. He is committed to bringing us into his presence with exceeding great joy. And since he's got that kind of commitment to us, my brother, my sisters, let's commit ourselves to Jesus Christ. There's someone who needs to make a decision today, and I want to extend two invitations for those of you who need to make a decision. Number one, you're watching today, and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I've told you and talked to you about the unconditional love of God through Christ Jesus. And if you're watching today and you want a relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do is believe. Believe that he died for your sins and that he rose from the dead and confess it with your mouth and you shall be saved. I'm going to show you how you can respond to the decision that you're making right now. If that's you. There's a second group of you who are watching. You possibly been logged onto these services for a number of weeks. This might be your first time, but there's something that's moved upon you and said to you, you need to get connected to Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. And from wherever you are in this country, we want you to be connected to the movement that God is raising up in these days to share the gospel of Jesus Christ lead people into a relationship with Christ, to love without limits. And if you're watching right now and you know you need to connect with us, it's time for you to make a decision. Whether you are coming to Christ for the first time or whether you're already saved and you want to unite with our church, I want you to respond in one of two ways. Either you can send an email to connect at the boulevard.org or you can send a text message to 901-446-4242. If you send that text message or an email in reply, you're going to receive an email from us. And it's going to have a link in it. Click that link. A form is going to produce itself. And I want you to fill that form out with the best information possible. And if you do that and click that button that says submit, our team is going to be in touch with you to help you with the next steps of your journey with Jesus Christ. We're excited about the decision you're making today. We're praying that you make the decision God calls you to make. We would be so excited for you to join us as we continue walking with Jesus on the journey of Christian discipleship. Come on, encourage the person in your home. Type in the comment section, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Come on. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't bring you this far to walk away from you. He's interested in your success and in you reaching the destiny that God has for you. Well, brothers and sisters, let's give God a big praise for the decisions that have been made on this day. And we're so excited for what God is doing in the life of our church. Listen, as we come to the close of this time, I want you to uh, make plans if you're part of a life group to make sure you are at your life group on time and prepared as we go into deeper study of the word of God. And then we continue to fast this Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the refresh. Meet us at 12 noon, 12 noon for our time of prayer. You can dial in uh, to 302-202-1110 or you can go to YouTube 
or Facebook and hang on after 12:15 for the afterflow. Uh, we just thank God for what God is doing during this time of prayer and of fasting. Let's continue to pray and fast for our city. You know, there's so many people going through tough times. There's violence that is rampant across this nation, and we need God to send healing to our land. Well, as we go from this time, let me pray God's blessings upon you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In your uprising and in your down sitting and your going out and in your coming in and your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter, even in your tears. Until we see Jesus face to face, we go in love, joy, and peace. And it's in his name we pray this blessing. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Attention Boulevard Prayer Warriors. Join Pastor J. Lawrence Turner over the next 10 weeks as we refresh through prayer and fasting. Join us every Wednesday as we fast beginning at 8 a.m., ending at 6 p.m. And join Pastor Turner at 12 noon for a live prayer moment and words of inspiration. Spread the word and tune in on Facebook Live or via conference call. Join us as we refresh ourselves in the Lord together. Rooted, staying faithful because our legacy depends on it, is a Boulevard original sermon-based life group study based on Jesus' letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor in Revelations 2 through 3. As we celebrate our centennial as a church, we want to recommit ourselves to what it means to remain faithful to Christ in an ever-changing world and religious landscape. Each Sunday beginning September 19th, Pastor Turner will share a message on one of the seven churches. And in our life groups, we will dive deeper into the biblical truths found in the text as we apply them to our lives. If you want to get connected to a life group, email rooted at the boulevard.org as we work to get you more deeply connected to discipleship at the boulevard. Tune in on Sundays for our virtual worship experience emanating from our Midtown Sanctuary. The Boulevard is the place to be for soul-stirring worship and a timely word from God. We're on Facebook and YouTube at 1030 a.m. every Sunday. Services will be rebroadcast at 6 p.m. September is National Suicide Prevention Month. All month, mental health advocates, prevention organizations, survivors, allies, and community members unite to promote suicide prevention awareness. Research shows people who are having thoughts of suicide feel relief when someone asks them in a caring way. Findings suggest acknowledging and talking about suicide may reduce rather than increase suicidal tendencies. Some of the warning signs of someone who's contemplating suicide may include talking about wanting to die or wanting to kill oneself, buying a gun or stockpiling pills, feeling empty, hopeless, trapped, or like there's no reason to live, talking about being a burden to others, withdrawing from family or feeling isolated, medical illness, including chronic pain, using more alcohol or drugs. If you or someone you know is experiencing any suicidal thoughts or feelings, get help right away. If there is an emergency, dial 911. There are also resources that can help. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255 is a great tool that can assist. Always remember to stay connected. Staying in touch after a crisis can make a difference. Calling all Boulevard couples, we want to celebrate you. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary this month, let us know by submitting your name, anniversary, and the number of years you're celebrating on our website at theboulevard.org slash anniversaries. We'll honor you during our online worship experience on the fourth Sunday of each month. Calling all kids, kindergarten through fifth grade, Disciple Town is where you want to be. Sunday virtual worship begins at 12 noon. Click the link in e-news to join us as we learn about Christ and the Bible. And get ready to explore. Join Miss Monica for Disciple Town Discovery, a place to try new things. We're learning more about God and ourselves through movement, the arts, and cooking. Look out for more information via e-news 
and at theboulevard.org. Middle schoolers, there's a new place for you to grow. Join Miss Ty each Sunday at 12 noon on Zoom for Evolve, a place to learn and grow. Check e-news for the link and email Miss Ty for more information. High schoolers, the Nexus Pod, Place of Discipleship, is on IG Live every Sunday at noon. If you're a middle, high school, or college-age student, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Nexus Boulevard Youth so you don't miss a thing. If your age is 18 to 25, Cram Ministry is for you. Cram, Change Requires Alternative Measures, is the Boulevard's college-age ministry that seeks to assist post-secondary students in making a healthy transition into young adulthood. Don't miss our Zoom sessions every Friday night at 6 p.m. Email Minister Chris Watson for more information at watson.christopher at theboulevard.org. The Boulevard continues to be a blessing to others, whether it's feeding the hungry, showing love to essential workers, or any of a number of community efforts. We couldn't do it without your generosity. Your giving makes the difference. There are multiple ways to give. Text Boulevard Midtown to 77977, Cash App, Money Sign, Mississippi Boulevard, PayPal, or by mail. Remember to use hashtag Boulevard Connect to share your watch party, virtual life group, or social media post about how much you enjoyed our most recent service. To make sure you never miss what's happening at the Boulevard, follow us on social media and sign up for our weekly e-news by emailing info at theboulevard.org.